Hello, everyone. Welcome back once again, ResearchWorks podcast, EACD Slovenia 2023. I can't begin to tell you how amazing it's been to talk to so many presenters and researchers here. It's been so wonderful, and I hope you've been enjoying the series. Uh, and today, I'm going to talk. I'm going to be talking to someone who I actually just met yesterday. It was in my presentation, and and you were the chair of the presentation and told me all about Spain and the work that you've been doing. So I'm so glad you said yes to coming on. So thank you, Dr. Marie Carmen. Carmen Leo. Did I say that right? Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Yeah, you've afternoon. been very polite. Hopefully I've said it somewhat right. Um, and you wrote out where you're from in English for me. It's from the Spanish Society of Pediatric Physiotherapy. So, But it's actually called something else in Spanish, which you say better, the Miguel... Uh, the University Miguel Hernández. See, yes. it says it so Alicante. beautifully. It's yeah. amazing, amazing. Um, and yesterday when we spoke, we really connected on the fact that we're both physiotherapists in the paediatric area and really, uh, really passionate about evidence-based interventions and therapies. Uh, and that's sort of where we got talking. I know today you just came from a presentation that was a combined effort from, from a lot of um, leading researchers and clinicians on early intervention in neurodevelopment, neurodevelopmental disabilities in Europe, Sharon experiences and you had a very specific segment that you presented in didn't you what was it that you presented today okay so i presented a cross-sectional study uh -huh. uh, about a survey that we did in spain last year yeah and the whole survey was uh, about the uh, what practices are done by the pediatric physiotherapies yeah and but today i presented only the part of the early intervention Great. pediatric physiotherapies great so yes. this was a cross-sectional uh, study so you, you sent out surveys to pediatric physiotherapists mainly in, in spain was that the the main area yes uh, in spain we have the cefip that is the spanish society of pediatric physiotherapy i see yep and it has 20 years now wow and we wanted to know what are we doing because our goals are to to uh, implement the evidence yes. into the practical training yes so we wanted to do uh, to take a picture of the the moment yeah. of uh, because we have done a lot of work to to disseminate the evidence but we didn't know yeah. what are people do, uh, doing sure so that's the goal of the survey so the the CFIP, this organization yep. uh, was who um, uh, uh, send the, the survey to all the people that are wonderful uh, uh, that are in the association and and also other associations in Spain helps help us to disseminate the survey. Great. So, so it, it was, feels like it was quite representative yes, of the pediatric popula uh, physiotherapy population. Yes. Yeah. yes. So the, the, the pediatric physiotherapists, or most of them, are inside this society. Amazing. That's yes. wonderful. Okay. Yes. So what did, um, I guess maybe before we go to the results, even though I'm very keen to talk about the results, what were some of the questions that you had in this survey? Just a bit of a sample of what you asked. So we mainly ask about the, uh, the first, of course, the socio demographics mm -hmm. and the job characteristics mm -hmm. of the respondents. Mm -hmm. and, and we also ask about the approaches uh -huh. that people follow. Right. Okay. Uh, but we didn't ask directly. We asked uh, uh, which activities you do. I work directly with the child I, I work with the families I talk to the families uh -huh. I give recommendations I I I don't work with the child I only work with the family so so yeah. these were some of the answers and yeah. and, and then uh, uh, with these answers we 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 got up like a profile of right of what uh, approach mm. are they following and right. then we also ask questions regarding the the interventions and the the techniques that they use. Okay, okay, that's so very it interesting. Was the yeah. main question. The survey was longer. Okay, but, okay. but we <laughs> yeah. still have that's no. That's okay. Bit of a snapshot. <laughs> yeah, only, I only <laughs> talk about that. That's fine. That's fine. From a, from a snapshot perspective, so what were some of your results? What did you find through this survey of pediatric physiotherapists in Spain? So we found that uh, half of the pediatric physiotherapists working in early intervention mm -hmm. use the expert model 
So okay. they work with the child and, yep. and they don't work quite a lot with the parents. Okay. Okay. And 70, no, uh, seven, 17 uh-huh. percent, they, they work only with the family center approach. Okay. And yep. the rest of them, I think it's 32 percent. They, they, they are in between. They, they are in like in transition between okay. an expert model and the family center. Wow. Okay. Mm. Were, was that result surprising to you, or was it what you felt like you expected? I yeah. thought I thought that uh, before the survey, uh, I thought that the results were going to be higher in the family center mm. because now there are many people doing trainings yeah. and learning about that. Yeah. But maybe those people that do the trainings, they maybe they still don't follow all the recommendations or maybe there are many people that still don't learn everything or I don't know. We we have to... Yeah, (laughs) it's so interesting, isn't it? And sometimes it seems surprising because when we come to places like this, we talk about it endlessly, about involving the family in a family-centred approach. Um, But it's also important to know that that hasn't changed in actual practice yet and we need to do a little bit more. I think that's important, isn't it? Um, What about intervention approaches? What did you find in terms of what was the finding for that? So the interventions, we we are um, surprised, but it's a good surprise because uh, we found that more than uh, 60% of the techniques that people are using are uh, evidence-based. Wonderful. Yes. That's great. That's really good to know. And and for example, the most physiotherapists use uh, support products Mm -hmm. and interventions on the caregivers Mm -hmm. and uh, task oriented uh, approaches and and that and so an active techniques fabulous yeah so so it was a great that's really good news interesting though like even though that that percentage is really high like more than half of 60 percent 40 percent is still quite a high number of not necessarily. Was it forty percent that was non-evidence, less evidence-based, no, or no, no. how did that separate? No, there are techniques that are used for uh, by few people, okay. but they are still evidence-based. Yes. For example, hydrotherapy. Yeah. Okay. That has good evidence. Okay. Uh, I guess that because the um, you need a, a, a yeah, swimming pool. Yeah. Or something. Sure. Sure. But so it's used only by twenty percent ah, of I people. See. That's great. Yeah. Because maybe yep. they don't have the the environment for mm-hmm, doing sure. that. Yeah. And other techniques, for example, virtual reality. Mm-hmm. That is mm, not very expensive. Some yeah. uh, in some ways uh, yep. is used. Only f- by 20%. I see. Okay. So maybe we need more uh, training or, or, sure. or knowing better the, the, play, the games or yeah. something. But, yep. Yep. but there are other techniques that are very used okay. but have no evidence. For example, the, the, the stretching, okay. the passive stretching yes. and, yep. and those techniques uh, yep. are very used. Right. Hmm. What other interventions were listed there that didn't that doesn't don't have a lot of evidence behind it? Were they anything was there anything that stood out to you? <laughs> okay, there are uh, we we used the mainly the paper of Novak of to sure. 2020 yeah. to, yeah, yeah, great. to just to classify the te- the evidence of the techniques. Okay, great. Yep. So maybe there are techniques that now they have more a little bit more evidence than, yeah, than, than sure. two years ago. Yep. And for example, there is uh, boba, boita, uh, uh, osteopathy. Uh-huh. Those techniques are still very used, and yep. they still don't have enough evidence. So. Mm. So, yep. okay, so we have to learn uh, yeah. or, or maybe they, they should do more research. Mm. I mean, it's really or, interesting in that, in that space. I remember talking to, I know that's been listed in the traffic light system now and, and not so long ago we spoke to Anna Tavelde from the Cerebral Palsy Alliance and her team there have 
Kathy Morgan and Arna Novak too, and and they found that with with NDT and their meta analysis that there was actually a lot of studies that have been done on mm. it. It was quite a big sample now, and and it still wasn't something that was seen as evidence based. And they they called for it for the de implementation of of mm. NDT, and, and I know there's different forms of NDT as well. So it makes it quite complicated in that way, but it's interesting to note that um, these techniques are, are still around because it reflects maybe when you were trained and when you mm. practiced and opportunities to do more training. Are there other things that we can do to support more evidence-based practice? Is there anything else we can do? Uh, I think the, we can do things like this. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So to disseminate science because mm. for I think it's very easy for people that are working at the universities or in the in the scientific societies yeah. or that are doing research. Uh, all these people have very clear what to do, but sure. there are lots of people that maybe they don't have access to yeah. the research. Or, for example, in my country, many people don't speak English or don't read English, mm. and, and it's a barrier, of yeah, course. Yeah, sure. Or they don't know many people. They they don't know how, uh, how to look for uh, the papers or, or where to look for the evidence. Mm. So yeah. So they can... So I think that um, we need more training yeah. in, in, yeah. in how to look for the evidence. Not, yeah. um, of course, uh, physiotherapists need training about everything mm. all our mm. life. Yeah, but keeps going. <laughs> yes, but in this aspect, I think uh, I think we in the universities are doing a great job. Yeah, but still need more yeah. work to do yeah. because. Uh, yeah. There are still people that need help. That need that for, support. For that. Yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, as a final point, that was great that you covered so much there for us. Is there one main take home from your study that you would like therapists to really remember and, and take away from this conversation? Is there anything that you can think of? I think that uh, if we compare what are we doing now, what, for example, the people who work many years ago and we compare what we did 20 years ago, mm. uh, we have learned, we have uh, evolved. Yeah, so, so, so I think we are on the way. Yeah. But we have to keep learning. We have to keep doing research. Mm. And, and, and I think that the people that are working in pediatric physiotherapy should be open to the new... Uh, uh, approaches yeah. and to learn and 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 don't be afraid to stop doing things that we have learned many many years ago. Maybe yeah. they they are a step, yeah. And now we have to do more steps and yeah. learn more. And, yeah. and and that's my view. That's, that's my great perspective. Mm. It's a great perspective. I think um, sometimes letting go of things that you might have spent a lot of time doing in the past can mm. be really can be really difficult um, but you do need to also remember and challenge yourself that we are health professionals and yes. you need to keep up and and keep moving forward and embrace what the evidence is saying so mm. yeah that's mm. great information from that from that study thank you so much for sharing that again I'm going to say it one more time the fact that you speak to me in English I can't speak Spanish <laughs> and so I know sometimes my questions when I say it in English is a little bit tricky so thank you for, for still answering I, I think it's absolutely incredible and I can't begin to describe to people how impressed I am when people who don't naturally speak or you know the, the mother tongue is in English and then you have to translate in your head to speak to me so thank you for for your patience with me and and being able to talk to us uh okay. in in english okay thank you so much and thank you for understanding oh. and if i made mistakes i'm so sorry <laughs> no, no, no. i tried to do my best you were ama you were amazing and and i can always learn from this too so thank you very much thank for you. sharing all this information i think it's important that we all know what everyone's doing from all around the world so to all of our listeners thank you once again for tuning into this episode i hope you're enjoying it i'm sure you'll have so much more to listen to so take your time going through all of the content that we have for you but i'll talk to you all again really soon bye Thank you.